Hello folks, welcome back to another episode of Papa Bear Outdoors. This is yours truly, Papa Bear, with you today. It is a rainy Saturday morning in late September here in western Kentucky in the city of Barlow. We call it a city, it's got one four-way stop in it and uh, hardly any business at all. We live out in a rural community. But anyways, when I'm sitting here and looking forward to next week when my wife and I plan a camping trip and a uh, trout fishing trip over to Mammoth Spring, Arkansas in the old dark mountains. And uh, as always, I am preparing for this trip. Uh, I, uh, I fly fish Tenkara style for these trout as well as using spinning tackle. But today, I am going to uh, be tying flies. And uh, those of y'all that have followed my uh, videos uh, knows that one of my favorite flies to use in, uh, in ten car fishing for trout is the golden stone fly. So I'm going to prepare to uh, tie this golden stone fly for you folks today. So uh, sit back and enjoy. I hope you enjoy anyhow. And let's get started. First off, we're going to start with a heavy curved nymph hook. And this one is a number eight hook. I normally tie my stone flies either in a number eight or number six uh, nymphing hook. I, I am a nymph fisherman. This is a number eight curved nymph hook. That is a model 720H. And uh, we're going to put, put this in the vise. I'm using a... Uh, a 3 inch cone head. I like uh, using cone head for my nymphs. Slide that right on. And put it in the vise here. Alright, next up, uh, the uh, Spring River that we fish a lot is a fairly swift in the area that we fish in. And it takes a little bit of weight to get these nymphs down to the level that we need them to get to. So I'm going to add a little weight to this nymph by using this uh, lead tape. Now this is made by rump. And this is just a, a lead tape. It's got a little plastic backing on the back. You've got to peel that off and then it's an adhesive on the back of it. Let's see if I can get the thing peeled off sometimes. It's a little difficult for me. Once you get it started, it comes off pretty nice. There we go. Right like that. Okay, my first wrap, I'm going to start right about where the point of the hook starts. And we just wrap it at an angle to where it just barely overlaps. I'm going to take it up toward the head, but I'm going to stop shy of the head by about an eighth of an inch. And just tear it off right like that. All right. Now, I'm going to add a little bit more weight. I'm going to back up and start it again and give this body a little bit of taper, a little bit of shape. We're going to go a little bit past where I stopped earlier. Right like that. And now, I want to build up the thorax area of the fly. So I'm going to start a little in from that last wrap and make one more set of turns and stop a little shy of where I ended earlier. I don't know if you can see that well, but now I've got a taper to the body. I'm using a number eight 
unithread today, and this is in a light Cahill color, the yellow, light Cahill. I'm going to start at the head and uh, start my wraps, and then we are going to do some wraps to cover that lead and make, oh, cut a little close and cut my thread off there. Isn't that something? About like a rookie fly tire. So now I got to re-thread my bobbin. This is a bobbin threader. Just slide that through the jaw there and take the end of your thread and start it through the bobbin threader. There we go. We're re-threaded and ready to go again. Let's try this again. Start the thread. You can actually snap the thread off. And now we're just going to do several wraps of thread. Cover up those edges of the of the lead tape. Just give us a smoother base to start with. I have caught numerous trout on this yellow stonefly since I learned to tie it. And I, uh, it is truly my favorite fly to use for trout. Okay, we're going to bring it back to the end of the lead tape, which is about even with the barb on the hook. And now, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to use some dubbing. This is UV2. And I'm going to use a a, a sulfur yellow dubbing. This takes a little bit. Just wind the, what they call a worm, on the end of the thread there. And I am just going to put a small dubbing ball right at the end of the fly. Now what this is going to do, I'm getting ready to add uh, a tail to this and this helps the tail instead of being squished together and laying flat on the fly it'll splay the tail out and give it a little more lifelike action right here I am using a hairline turkey bite in yellow I'm going to need two of these just peel them right off of the quill Broke that one. All right, folks. Well, I got a little happy with that. Tore off several of them. There we go. I'm going to start one on one side of the fly. Just a light wrap to get it started. A second wrap, and now you can adjust the position on that by it for the tail. Now I'm going to add the other side. If you look closely, this has a natural curve to it. And on these tails, I want the curve facing away from the shaft of the hook. Lay that right up on there, give it a little pinch. Light wrap to get it started on there. Then I try to even it up with the other bite.
Okay, when you get them in the position that you want, a little bit tighter wrap, and wrap forward. I don't really worry about anything sticking out right now because we are going to uh, going to be putting layers over the top of that. So there is what the tail looks like. And that little bump of, uh, of dubbing causes that to flare out, which is what we want. Now we're going to add a couple items. This is a fine copper wire. We'll add it on. This will help hold the, uh, the thin skin and the see where I went around the hook point, but this time I'm going to remove that little mistake right there and then wrap over, tighten that all up. All right, we got our wire in. You just pull that out of the way for now. And uh, now we're going to go to a product that's called Thin Skin. Thin skin is made by Wapsy, or Wapsy rather, Wapsy, and this is a model oak golden stone. This is for stone flies right here. I've already got a piece left over uh, from a previous tying uh, session. And if you'll notice, you have a, a dull side, and then you have a shiny side. And we're going to tie this shiny side up so when I bend it over to stretch it across the back, the dull side will be up. Now to help get that started good, we're going to cut a point onto it, right like that. That will help us get it started. like that. All right, folks, we're moving right along. Now it's time to build the dubbing body. So we are going to do the abdomen section currently. Now you don't want to get a whole lot of dubbing at one time. You want this not to be bulky. So you start off with thin noodles of, of dubbing. Twist that around your thread like so, and then we're going to start building a paper body. You pull down and tighten that thread up as you go, and you see it's real easy to add to it once you get started. Shaping up nicely. You just keep building and you want to build a taper into it. You'll notice insects have a taper to their body. All right, it's looking pretty good to me right now. So now we're going to take this thin skin, slightly stretch it, make it tight. We went up about two-thirds, 
of that area we and now we pull it forward and pinch it a couple light wraps stretch it forward and then a little bit heavier wrap to secure the thin skin and once you get it stretched across and smooth then you take your copper wire and I'm going to counter wrap it opposite the direction that I used in wrapping the dubbing on. We're going to wind up with four or five segments. Copper wire not only secures that, but it gives the segment to the body. All right. Now we're going to trap that wire with the thread. One thing about number eight thread, it's not real thick, so you wrap firmly, but not so firm that you break the thread. And then we're going to helicopter the uh, wire off, right like that. It'll break off. And now we take the thin skin, we're going to stretch it back the other, well, getting ahead of myself. I'm going to take a small piece of dubbing, add that to the thread, and we're just going to go right around where we ended that at and put just a small collar, and then we fold the thin skin back and lock it down with a few turns of the thread. Now we're going to add another small dubbing ball to the front of where we just secured that. That's about twice what I need. Alright. Now we're going to add a little dubbing ball. Remember when we put the tail, we did that? Well, we're getting ready to put wings or legs on it. These are going to stick out toward the back of the body. I've already got a couple that are left over that I pulled off earlier. Remember the curve I told you about, the natural curve. We're going to set these right here, pinch it in place. A couple uh, light turns to hold it. And position the feather in the direction you want it to be. I add the second one. Some people secure these feathers at the same time. I did mine one at a time. Position. A couple more heavier wraps, and this time we're going to trim the ends so I don't bulk up the thorax there. Take your scissors and cut close without cutting your, your thread. Trim that off right like that. And it appears that I trimmed my feather thing. So now I'm going to have to start over again. Y'all are getting it live instead of memory. understand the saying that I just told you, you'd have to be a child of the 70s and 80s. Alright, 
try this again. Try to avoid clipping our feathers this time. There we go. Secure that down. Now we're going to add a little dubbing, make another dubbing ball. Now we're going to fold the thin skin forward, but this time, instead of stretching it taut, I'm going to give it a little wing bag. So we put a little loop in there and that gives it a wing casing. Alright, then just a slight piece of dubbing again, make another dubbing ball to cover the thread that we just used to secure that. The wing casing in place. Alright, fold the thin skin back. We got a little dubbing ball ahead of that already. And another set of legs. This is one of the most time-consuming flies I tie because of all the legs and things, but the most satisfying. With the light wraps, like the position, in your arm. Little flies and fat fingers. Not good bad fellows. Alright, a little more dubbing. Flip the tag in of the feather, trying not to whip off what we just did. I normally do three sets of these legs. This will be the last set. There's a variation of this fly where I add horns to the front. Those horns are done before you slide the cone head on.
Alright, a little more dubbing. Twist the bags. Okay, we're going to fold that wing casing just like we did previously. Just like that. Fold the thin skin back again. Add a little more dubbing. One more time, the wing case. Got to keep that centered up over the head. All right, we're gonna add just a bit more dubbing. To cover it, tidy that up. This is David McPhail would say on his fly time videos. Now we're going to stretch the thin skin back. We're going to trim it. And I leave a little bit of tag sticking out about an eighth of an inch on that trim. One last bit of dubbing. Finish off the head. Nice collar right behind that head to hold that head stationary. And now we're going to take our whip finisher right here. We're going to whip finish the head. Four, five. Pull it down tight. I'm going to give it one more whip, just for good measure. Right like that. And we are almost done. I'm going to do one more thing to it, folks. This is a Loon UV Clear Fly Finish. This is the thick formula right here. We're going to seal all this in. Make this fly more rugged. And I seal it on the top over the thin skin. That locks the copper wiring in and all these thread turns and all. And we're going to put a little bit over the head collar there as well. Set that on there and let it seep in a little bit. Let it settle down. Dubbing needle if needed. Got to smooth that out. And this gives it a hard finish. Take your UV light. And cure that. It only takes a few seconds. It cures. That UV resin. That should be it. Now I'm going to take my dubbing brush. I'm going to go underneath the belly there. I'm just going to pick out a few fibers on the thorax. Give it the 
the appearance of legs a little bit. And that is the golden stonefly, number eight, hook. Here's a close-up of it, folks. 